Are we for sound? It's a pleasure to be here at Jeps Cross to announce the opening of the new police mounted facilities. As you can see, this is a significant improvement on the 1914 facilities available at Feberton. The 32 ventilated stables are, of course, complemented by an all weather arena, round yards, also facilities for farriers and veterinary services a wash bay and everything that we could possibly need to continue Saipol's rich heritage in mounted operations. We're joined by Kelly, of course, who has day-to-day -day expertise in management in relation to these operations and the Police Commissioner. Might turn to the Commissioner for any additional comments. Uh, thank you, Minister. And as the Minister said, um, you know, we've been, uh, well, horses have been a part of the South Australian Police since we were founded. And since 1914, uh, their home has been at the Theberton Police Barracks. So after 110 years, um, to move from what would have been considered a state-of-the-art facility 110 years ago to what is now a contemporary modern facility that looks after the welfare of our horses and our staff is a, is a massive change for SAFOL and I think this will become a legacy piece in terms of us continuing to serve the community of South Australia. Uh, our mounted operations team provide an invaluable operational frontline service uh, for the community um, and you'll often see the horses at major events in Hindley Street, around the CBD and right across the state um, providing uh, great support to our frontline operational police. So uh, for the horses to be properly uh, accommodated um, and also for our staff to have the correct facilities to look after our horses, train the horses and undertake the, the work they do it is a massive step change for us and one we're really pleased about. And this was not something that was on our agenda prior to a decision to locate the new Women's and Children's Hospital on the site of Feverton Police Barracks. And there was a degree of sadness that we were leaving uh, that historic site. But when you stand here and look at the, uh, the state of the art facilities that complies with work health and safety requirements, animal management requirements, and general building uh, standards, um, we can't help but be excited about the future. And I'd just like to pass over to Kelly. Uh, Kelly is the officer in charge of our mounted operations section. Kelly has worked out of the old Theberton Police Barracks and is now taking responsibility for making sure that this facility operates the right way. And I, I think it'd be uh, helpful to hear from her as to the, the comparisons that they've made already. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's officially day three for us, so the horses were moved in on Sunday. And I can uh, honestly say uh, from day one, they've been very settled. Um, they enjoy the new facilities, especially the yards. Um, they're able to move in and out and see what's going on. Um, so already, uh, even from a management point of view, from an efficiency, feeding, caring, um, we've been able to really streamline our processes. And I look forward to obviously continuing to do that. Um, the indoor arena you see behind us, is going to be a real benefit to us. It will provide 365 days of training and working the horses regardless of the weather. Um, so overall the facilities um, in comparison to Thebin and Barracks, although we've got the history behind us there, uh, it's certainly a new chapter for us here uh, and I'm very excited uh, to see what the future holds in terms of the mounted operations unit moving forward. So I appreciate everyone coming. So Kevin, what specific features does the Jeff's Cross facility have that Everton didn't have? Um, I, I guess the main feature here is in the design. Um, Theberton Barracks was obviously designed in 1914 and has been tacked on over the years. So it, moving around and managing the horses and training uh, became a bit more time consuming because of, because of the design itself. So moving here, we had the opportunity to engage all our staff um, as well as all the design experts to develop something that creates efficiencies just in not only feeding and caring for the horses but also training and moving about through our operations. So that was probably the biggest change that we've seen. So is the whole mounted unit going to be based here? Um, generally our main base is Jeps Cross. Yeah, we still have a facility, a, a minor facility up at a, a Chunga Training Reserve where the horses are paddocked at the moment. Um, today we have about half of them at the moment here um, and we'll look to move um, most of them down over the next week or so. So, so 32 stables, is the opportunity 
now that we're in this facility to grow that to bigger numbers? Uh, we certainly have the opportunity for expansion and our numbers do fluctuate just depending on what we're doing and, and the success, succession plan that we work with. Um, so absolutely this facility has been designed to incorporate all of those factors, hopefully in the next 50 to 100 years to come. Uh, Kerry, the Commissioner just said that there was a degree of sadness when they moved out of the old facility. How was it feeling for you moving from the old facility to this one? Well, I, I think the heritage that it held for us, um, it, it was sad to see it go. Um, in 1914 and you know they, they built everything and um, you know to see it obviously get demolished in line for new facilities it is always you know a, a bit sad but in, in saying that uh, as part of the design we were able to incorporate some of those heritage features um, in this new facility so we were able to bring some of the old into the new um, and carry on some of those traditions as well. What works? Can you, can you elaborate on that? What are some of the old things that you carried on? Uh, you'll see in the main entrance, uh, walking into the facility, we've actually got the old stalls, the, the original 1914 stalls. Um, so two of those were brought over uh, and you'll see the old water trough as well. So that's at the original 1914. Uh, you'll see some of the other um, aspects out in the farrier shed where we've got the old tie-up points which were handmade by a blacksmith back in 1914 uh, and other little bits and pieces that we've been managed to incorporate in the display cabinet as well to, to bring the history in line with you know the future. Well the way you train horses change is there something you can do at the old barracks that you can do now? Um, I think from a, a, a training uh, I guess forward planning perspective um, in the old uh, facility we we're always working around weather so regardless of heat or rain you know we were training out there now though we can actually plan to train regardless of what the weather is actually doing and we can train 24 7 as well because obviously the lighting in here is a lot better than what we had out there as well so it's those minor efficiencies I guess from a outsider's point of view that actually make quite a drastic difference moving forward Heritage and tradition are a really important part of the mounted unit. I, I understand it probably is an important part of Safe Hole as a whole, but this is such a contrived part of the of the police force. Is it important to see that heritage and tradition move to this new facility? Yeah, I, I think it is. I mean, we, we can look to the past to shape the future, um, but the mounted operations unit are based on the old British cavalry. Um, so obviously, you know, the horses used to be the primary mode of transport and those cavalry movements were designed in battle to coordinate a large group of people and those are the aspects that we still carry on today because obviously out in the street we still need a coordinated approach when dealing with the public and, and the horses and those traditions that you build up over time, you know, certainly carry the discipline and motivation and drive forward into the future. You know, we absolutely got to adapt, we got to be flexible, um, but it's always good to look at the past um, and use that as motivation for the future. I guess the most important question is how the horses are adapting, how are they enjoying their new facilities? Um, well, very well, I think. You know, if you look behind you and you go for a walk through, they're very settled. Uh, we even had a few only hours after moving in who decide to go for a nap and lay down. So yeah, it is still new to them, but already um, they've settled in remarkably well. Um, and I think they truly appreciate just the extra light, ventilation and space that the facilities do provide them. They do an important role. We look after them very well um, and we certainly want them to be happy. And I think they're exactly that. Anything else guys? Um, I've just got some questions for the commissioner on the firing range. What a surprise. <laughs> uh, so w what's your response to the issues uh, um, revealed at the firing range? Look, it's, um, I think it's a little bit cheeky to, to suggest that this was um, a secret we were keeping. You know, we had to inform in excess of uh, 2,000 staff of the adjustments we were making to our uh, firearms training regime because